the research phase of the Thrust WSH project has been centred on two programmes since the beginning. CFD, conducted by the University of Leeds and Imperial College, has been using supercomputers to model the aerodynamic behaviour of designer Lorne Campbell's concept at a range of speeds. In addition, Kinetic have been carrying out extensive hydrodynamic CFD studies. Alongside all of this, the model test boat programme has been using C3.1, a jet-powered, one-seventh scale model equipped with sensors to gather data at speeds of up to 90 miles per hour, thanks to data logging specialists AIM. The results of these runs showed that the aero design was sound, with the boat tracking true and accelerating hard once the hull rose out of the water and rode on the four planing points. However, it quickly became apparent that model builder and pilot Len Newton was struggling to maintain control from the shore thanks to the spray and the speed. To progress to even higher speeds, a new model would be needed, along with a new control philosophy. Past contenders for the world water speed record have learned the hard way just how sensitive hydroplanes are to changes in the craft's pitch at speed as they skim across the water's surface. Thrust WSH's CFD research would quantify just how narrow the margin of error would be at the project's target speed of over 400 miles per hour and would inspire an innovative new approach as Chief Designer Lorne Campbell explains. My name is Lorne Campbell. I'm a, a naval architect specialising in high-speed boats and they, uh, they call me Chief Designer. Uh, that is mainly my age, I think, but anyway. We're hoping to achieve uh, 450 miles an hour. That is the design speed for the machine. It is uh, very challenging because of the aerodynamic lift underneath these machines, which is liable to lift them off, flip them over backwards. If you use an ordinary hydroplane, it's a very tentative, uh, very slight change in angle of attack needed to make the whole thing lift off. You know, we're talking order of three quarters of a degree or something like that. The boat that we're putting forward is not actually a hydroplane. A hydroplane skids over the top of the water. This is a hydrofoil. It's um, supported on uh, hydrofoils. There are passenger hydrofoils around, slow ones. And um, it's a broadly similar system. Um, we're using technology, which is why we're here, because we are desperately trying to do this in as safe a manner as possible. Our philosophy is to, uh, it's not to make the most efficient craft, um, it's to make the safest craft we can and have maximum control over it. Hydrofalls are effectively wings that operate under the water surface. America's Cup yachts have used foils to great success, reducing hydrodynamic drag by lifting the craft's hull out of the water, albeit at much lower speeds than those we're targeting. Foils have actually been used in water speed record attempts in the past. Alexander Graham Bell and Casey Baldwin set a record of 70.86 miles per hour in 1919. The K5 White Hawk jet boat was less successful in 1952, despite using hydrofall data supplied by the British Admiralty. Modern CFD techniques have since shown that traditional foils cavitate at around 70 miles per hour, vaporizing the water above the foil. This creates an air pocket that robs the device of lift and prevents higher speeds as drag increases. All of this makes foils look like a dead end for a project that's targeting 450 miles per hour on water. But a research programme undertaken by defence contractors Kinetic using advanced computer modelling has shown that supercavitating effects, well understood in the design of propellers, will permit the use of foils which will operate at the speeds Thrust WSH is aiming for. Operating below the water's surface, they will provide more control than a hydroplane. Downward facing sensors and computer driven servos that react many times a second will adjust the foil's angle of attack to maintain a constant attitude at speed. The pilot will still continue to have control over the boat's direction, speed and braking. The rear struts that connect the foils to the hull will provide steering, removing the requirement for a separate rudder. The need to test these control principles has resulted in the construction of a low speed test platform, instantly christened Ugly Boat. The model we have here, we call uh, euphemistically the ugly boat. This is a very odd machine to look at and nothing like a record breaker. 
but it's got a lot of technology in it on the uh, control of attitude, pitch attitude, trying to stop the takeoff by using the control rather than leaving it in the lap of the gods. And so uh, we're actually trying to control the attitude of the boat at all stages. But we're using water to do it. We're using hydrodynamics to do it uh, because this is a, a water speed record. The traditional way people uh, would have taken records was to actually lift the boat clear of the water by planing shoes. So that then the boat would be a lot of the time in the air, a lot of the time in the water, but basically it was just skimming across the top, like if you throw a stone across a, you know, we've all done it. Um, but, the new, but the way we're looking at it is using hydrofoil. So basically the hydrofoil is running in the water rather than on top of it, which will give us more, la uh, more, more control over the boat uh, for pitch and, and even roll. So basically the, the actual foil will pull the boat back down into the water if it starts to lift too high, but lift it up if it's going too low and starting to touch the water. Um, so if anything goes wrong with the boat, what we can actually do is put the falls down and the boat will come down onto the water and slow down very, very quickly. The design of a reactive system to control the foils, maintaining the boat's attitude above the water, has been led by Sean Whitehead at the University of Leeds. As far as the controls go, the Oakley boat has got all of the main systems that the bigger boats will have. Knowing that we had a fairly complicated system, we at Leeds wanted to have some sort of interim system that we could throw together fairly quickly and to test out the basic principles. As it evolves, it will become more and more beautiful. So it's a little bit like the, um, the old tale of the uh, ugly duckling that is really a swan and uh, hopefully it will evolve into that. We have to have some way of working out what the orientation of the boat is in pitch and roll and we have to have some means of measuring the ride height of the boat above the water, the foil deck. If the foil, for example, is deeper than we want it to be, then we tell that to pitch up like a, just like an aeroplane wing would pitch up. That gives more upwards force and it pushes that foil upwards and it pushes that part of the boat upwards. Uh, so in order to measure the attitude, we have something called an inertial measurement unit, which uh, looks at the uh, accelerations in three directions and that will tell you the orientation of the boat. All of the boats are designed to be operated by a human being in the same way as the airliner that you fly in is always going to be operated by a human being. The human is helped by the system because things are happening so quickly in all of these systems uh, that it's beneficial to have some form of computer and control that is supporting the human being. But right at the center of this is not only allowing the human being to make decisions, but also to keep them as safe as possible. The system does all of its measurements and calculations about 100 times a second. One of the things we need to know, one of the things we finally need to calculate is how deep the foils are. In order to calculate how deep the foils are, we need to know how high the boat is above the water. And so we bought a sonar unit, we sprayed water around it, we put all sorts of sources of high frequency noise, we've tested it, it works perfectly fine. Theoretically, it will work, but we are going to do some more tests with that. Ideally, we want to know the depth of each foil. So there are four foils on the boat and we would like to know the depth of each foil. So ideally, you would want to measure the depth at each foil. But uh, there's rough water underneath the boat. So um, I asked the experts on the team, where is there smooth water? And there is smooth water in, there's a, there's a tunnel underneath the boat. And there are two places where we can place ultrasonic sensors. So what we do is we place those ultrasonic sensors under the boat. And that doesn't tell us where each foil is. So this is where a little bit of mathematics comes into it. We use a bit of trigonometry. It's not too complicated, is we take the ride height, we take the uh, pitch and roll of the boat, and then we work out where each foil is because we know the dimensions of the boat. The reason for doing the short test is, first of all, can the boat transition from being on its hull, on the sponsors on the bottom of the hull, to getting onto its foils? That's what we wanted to see. Uh, um, and we showed that that works. So it showed that we were at the foil settings more or less right. 
Uh, and then the question was, uh, is it stable when, when it gets up? And then, and then if it's maybe rising up a little bit too much on the back, the question is, why is that? So it answered a heck of a lot of questions in a very small test. The ugly boat has done exactly what we wanted it to do. And now we can say we are now familiar with operating hydrofoil boats controlled using four separate hydrofoils. I'm not sure that anybody else in the world is doing that. Control system is basically electronics. Apart from the servo motors that actually control the angles of the foil, the, uh, the brains is electronics. And of course, the brain size, the electronic size, doesn't have to change when we go to the full size craft. So we can transfer the electronics from this tiny little boat, which is a meter and a bit long, to the, uh, the next craft, which is a quarter scale model, which is 3.2 meters long. And uh, after that, the same technology, once it's refined, could be transferred to the full-sized 12.2 meter boat. So uh, uh, what we're learning here can be transferred to the, large, you know, the, the, the next stages of the research. With the successful conclusion of the Ugly Boat trials, the Thrust team are now ready to move on to the high-speed test program, featuring a quarter-scale boat to test the super-cavitating foil concept. Richard Noble explains. We've done three to four years of research on all this. Um, Kinetic, of course, have been doing all that. They're all important, the hydrodynamic side of it. And uh, all this is coming together. And we now know, in theory, that, it, that we're capable of doing it. OK, but it's the practice which really counts. So now we're moving on to the next boat, which is this one, C3.2B. C3.2 is quite a beast, actually. It's got 350 pounds of thrust, jet thrust. It is um, a hydrofoil, so it climbs up onto its foils. Um, it uh, has got a capability of 225 miles an hour. Now, this is the proof of concept. And we're going to be running it in June, July. If it all works out, we're then going to push on to the big one, C6. And that's what we've got to build next year and get on with it. We'll have more news about what we learn from our new quarter-scale proof of concept test boat in the next project update. Subscribe to our channel and you'll be the first to hear how it goes.